Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and this continues the series on my cardboard hot wire foam cutter. In this video, I'm going to show you how this power box works. It's really simple, it's just a few basic components. I started with the three gang blue electrical box. You've got your cover plate. I've got a push on off style dimmer switch. Now, this is really critical because I screwed up when I made my first one. What I used to have was the rotary kind where you had to go all the way back to zero to turn it off. Well, the problem with that was I would lose my heat setting where I had it each time I would have to dial it back to zero to turn it off and then go hunt for my heat. With this, I set it and forget it, like Ron Popeil would say. So this allows me to just tap it on and off right once I get it set. For a one inch foam, I'm using a 0.43 millimeter guitar string, which I think is a 16 gauge for you guitar players out there. Uh, for that, on a one inch foam, I usually leave it on C here. I go from zero all the way up to U, which is way past 11. But So I leave it there and just tap it on and off. So then I've also got binding posts, outlets, and then I've got a permanently attached set of alligator clips attached to the other side of my transformer. So that's on the outside. So what's going on the inside is I've got my cord coming in from the wall. The hot side first stops off at this dimmer switch, which gives me on-off control over everything else, and it also adjusts my power. Coming out of the dimmer switch, I stop at my transformer, which I've got inside this box. It's an SL-728 150 watt transformer. It's an electronic kind rather than the magnetic kind. For my purposes, it was a little bit cheaper and it works just as well. So we stop off at the transformer after the dimmer. Then coming out of the transformer, we branch several different ways. We go through the fuse first before we go anywhere else. So we come out of the transformer, we go to the fuse. Then we're going to go to one of the binding posts. Then we go to one side of this 12 volt outlet and then we go to one of my alligator clips over here. So I have, with my transformer, I'm feeding three separate possible outputs. I'm also then using this outlet here as 120 volt. It's not fused like the other ones are, but it still allows me control with my dimmer switch. Now the key thing here is that you break the little connector tabs that are by your screw terminals. If you look closely, there is a little tab with a hole in it that kind of sticks out a little bit from the screws. The reason that tab is there is because it would be really nice to be able to run one wire to one side of each outlet, a hot and a neutral, and feed both outlets, right? Well, that's what they did. But if you break that little tab, then you run wires to each outlet and you can feed them separately. Um, a typical installation in a home would be, say, if you wanted one outlet to be controlled by a switch and the other one not, maybe. So what I did is I simply used separate voltages for these and I labeled them accordingly so that I didn't get them confused. I'll use the 120 for things like my soldering iron so that I can dial up my heat because I have a dumb 30 watt soldering iron that doesn't have adjustable heat. So I'll use that for that. And then here I've got three or four different hot wire setups right now. And so I'll just cut the female end off an extension cord and I can just plug in one of my hot wires to this one or I can use banana plugs with my binding posts, you know, banana plugs here, unscrew them, put the bare wires in up top. And then of course I've still got my permanently attached alligator clips, which are also labeled 12 volt dimmer 10 amp fuse. The reason I've got a 10 amp fuse on the secondary side of my transformer is because it puts out 150 watts at 12 volts, which gives me 12 and a half amps. But I don't want to blow transformers, so I've only got a 10 amp fuse so that gives me a 2.5 amp safety margin. You probably can't see it, but inside this hole here where I used to have a switch is my inline fuse holder. I ordered a panel mount fuse holder from Newegg, so it should be here, oh, maybe by the end of the week, and I'll put the panel mount fuse holder in this hole here. I used to have the switch because I used to have the stupid rotary style dimmer. This way I free up a space and I can put more stuff. Now, People say, oh, you got to have AC, you got to have DC. Well, they're both just fine. Keep the voltage on your wire to a safe level. 12 volts is generally considered safe, so you should be fine there. AC doesn't require any rectification, so it saved me a little bit. I bought one less component. So that was really nice. Another thing is I put the fuse on the secondary side of my transformer. And I've got a circuit diagram that I'll show you in another video how to wire this all up in case it's kind of confusing. I got the fuse on the secondary side 
because it ranges from zero to 12 and a half amps. Whereas my primary side, when I'm running, you know, 10 times the voltage, it only runs from one to, or from zero to 1.25 amps. It's much easier to find fuses in increments that are useful from zero to 12 and a half amps than it is to find fuses in increments from zero to 1.25. So that's why I've got the fuse on my secondary side and that's where the load is anyway. That's what determines how much my transformer is drawing. So the fuse is on the secondary side. That's pretty much it. Um, check out my next video that's gonna show you how this is all wired up. And of course, someday I'll probably change this too and put it in a nicer black box or something. So it looks more mysterious, but that's all there is to it. I'm going to go ahead and hook this thing up now and show you how it all works. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.